here, first of all, everybody, PSM with a suited Keith Dambrot. Don't get used to it, according to Keith. But first off, Keith, we'll start with the softball. Just how has practice been going and how have the EGBs been going with this particular team? We've done a good job in practice. We've worked our guys really hard. Um, obviously, uh, you know, putting them all together is going to be the key for us and how quickly we can put them all together. That's going to be the main thing for us. With a lot of this newness, how newness can go one way or it can go the other way, how have you noticed this newness integrating and who amongst that newness has stood out in your opinion thus far? Well, we're much older, Zach, to, you know, to be perfectly frank. Uh, you know, we have we have a lot of fourth and fifth year guys uh, starting in the front court with uh, Joe Reese and Austin Rotron. And then you go down to Easley and Trey Williams and R.J. Gunn. Those guys are all these guys. And then in the backcourt, you're talking about Tevin Brewer, Dede Grant, and Trey Clark, who have all played a lot of college basketball. So we're, we're definitely going to be a little less Excuse reliant me, on, the, on newer guys. Uh, and again, the, we have some good young players, but I think I think uh, you know we, we can be a little more patient with them than, we, than we've had to be. I have to ask about what Tevin's process is, prognostication. Obviously, we reported about Tevin's setback. Just how is he doing, and what do you think a realistic timetable would be? Well, I think his body will be our guide, really, how he reacts. You know, to walking first, running next. You know, how quickly he can come back from it. Uh, but I do know he's going to be extremely motivated. He's an awfully tough human being, both mentally and physically. Uh, he was in good shape before the before the appendix. Uh, so, look, if we're going to be very careful with him, but by the same token, we're going to let him make some decisions. This is a team that had consistent difficulties with assists last year. Obviously, Tevin was a high assist guy, but how do you look to rectify that on-court connection to make sure that good passes are leading to high percentage shots? Well, we went into this knowing exactly what our weaknesses were, so uh, we immediately knew that we had to get older in the backcourt. Uh, and with Tevin Brewer and uh, Day Day Grant, we, I think between them they had more assists than we had as a team last year. So we did. We, we worked hard at that. We also worked hard at uh, just making sure we get we had more depth in the front court because we were bit by injuries last year and we didn't respond well because we were a little thin in the front court. And then the third thing we tried to do was improve our passing and our shooting ability. And, uh, you know, that's where Brewer, Trey Clark, uh, Quincy McGriff, Matush, Horansky, all those guys come from. In the past, I know defensively you've wanted, if you make repeated mistakes, you sit. Are you at a particular point at that with this depth where you could potentially down the line, even start of the season, go towards that route again? Well, you know, uh, every player responds differently. Uh, you know, there's some players that you, you have to coerce into playing great defense, and there's other people you have to massage and teach into playing great defense. And so, you know, we're going to be demanding. We know we can't win unless we play great defense and share the ball and make baskets. So those are the things that we're going to really work hard on. But we feel like we improved physically, which uh, it'll be a matter of time mentally when we improve enough to be a top-level team. Is it too early to determine a rotation, or rota is rotation still up for grabs, or is it just what you're seeing in practice now helping you to be a guide? Well, I think our rotation will change throughout the year. Again, we feel like we have some really talented young guys that have tremendous upside, uh, but by the same token, we have some older guys that have played a lot. So, you know, obviously you're going to lean towards playing your older guys early on until the young guys catch up. And so uh, I think I think it's going to be interesting to watch the whole thing develop. When you have th when you have a situation like you do now, how do you pitch it to those guys? Obviously, we've talked before about coaches missing games to get players. Just what was the sense of urgency now, and the fact that they could be a part of something that could build back up again? You know, we whenever you lose, you know, you always have some fear that hey, can you get good players? But we were fortunate. Uh, we were fortunate. I thought we did a good job of recruiting. Uh, you know, obviously we knew we weren't very good, so we kind of got a little head start and got out there and really worked hard recruiting-wise, and that's a credit to our staff. It really wasn't me because I coach the games every day. But, you know, Charles Thomas, Terry Wigan, uh, Rick McFadden, they were out of line, and they did a good job of really, you know, filling the void. And then, you know, the whole dynamic has changed as well. You know, with everybody transferring, there's a lot of good players available. You just have to vet it. 
and do your due diligence to make sure you get the right guys. You've experienced success and in some form of revitalization. Obviously, last year was what it was. To have had the experience of building this back up, how much do you hearken on those behaviors and use that as a guide for this 22-23 squad? Well, I mean, obviously, we didn't like what happened last year. Uh, you know, uh, but by the same token, you know, we won 21 games and 11 in the league without an arena, so we've shown we can win. We just have to get back to that, that same basic uh, uh, plan that, that helped us win the first time. And so that's all we're doing is we, we readjusted it. It's a little different. But by the same token, uh, you know, the basics really don't change from year to year. You can go back 50 years and the basics are still the same. Where is your line right now between being humbled but also being motivated as it relates to this team right now? Well, I'm always going to be humble. I think, you know, the, the people that start thinking they're this and that and the other, they, they kind of fall by the wayside eventually. Uh, but by the same token, you have to have confidence in your ability. Um, look, I hadn't been around a losing team since 1994. So was it humbling? Did I, did I react well? Obviously not. I didn't react well to it. But by the same token, I mean, you, you got to take the good, and be, good with the bad in life. And, you know, I'm not going to, certainly I'm not going to put the white flag up. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like we can win. I think we can win in this league. Uh, you know, we've always won in the league. We just had a bad year last year. And it was a perfect storm, but I'm not even thinking about last year anymore. I'm just thinking about this year. As you transition towards this year with guys like Easily, with guys like Trey, having them play more of their traditional position, how much does that help them from a freedom and from a mental standpoint, allowing them to find their growth and find their place? I feel like all our older guys have done an unbelievable job. I think Kevin Easley's been really consistent in practice. You know, Trey Williams has done a good job of losing weight after his injury uh, and is really playing at a pretty high level. Uh, Rotroff has worked hard to get back. You know, he did start practicing until September 6th. Uh, RJ Gunn lost 25 pounds. And is probably in the best condition of his life. Uh, and Andy Barr has made significant improvements, you know, really has worked hard to be a good player. So, you know, they knew what it was take. They got smacked in the mouth a little bit, too. Nobody liked it. But, you know, they want to win. And I think, you know, uh, you know, it's not going to be easy. This is a great league. But by the same token, we, we'll compete hard every night and we'll be in a lot of ball games. What has Joe brought that nastiness, that reliability down low? Obviously found success at Bowling Green under Coach Hewer, but now with you guys, where do you see him fitting? Well, he's played a million games. Uh, you know, he played a lot of games at Old Dominion, then he played a, played a you know, bunch last year at Bowling Green. I think he averaged 11 points and six rebounds in 19 or 20 minutes, which are good numbers. Uh, he's got a good brain. He's very versatile. He runs well. Uh, he's good defensively. I mean, he's just another good big guy that, again, we've had success with those Mac big kids that have been good players for us. Last year, you mentioned that you were expecting really good things, and obviously last year is the last year. Now that you've seen the product on the court for this team, what is your personal expectation with the guys you see and with the heartbeat you see on that court? I think we're going to be competitive. I think, again, like we can't have injuries, just like any team in this league can't have injuries. And, Obviously, the Tevin Brewer thing's a little bit of a setback because it just it just hurts your your ability to put it together quicker. So we we but by the same token, it can really help us because we'll get some other people ready to play that that spot, which should help your depth down the line. And so, like you have to look at every negative as a positive. 